Imagine this, two ladies in Inglewood were encircled by the police. A teenager in Los Angeles was detained at a subway station. A live streamer was arrested. In Buffalo, a protester was searched by police. And in Los Angeles, another protester was accused of gun possession twice in one day and got detained. What's the common thread here? They were all protesting against Scientology. First up, we have Pinche Becky and Sassafras. These two ladies were peacefully protesting in front of the Scientology building in Inglewood. Suddenly, they found themselves surrounded by police cars. At first, the situation looked really tense. Being surrounded by police cars is never a good feeling, especially when you're just trying to protest peacefully. But then, something unexpected happened. The officers didn't rush in or draw their guns. Instead, they stayed back and calmly observed the situation. They talked among themselves and watched them from a distance. It was clear that the officers wanted to make sure there was no danger before taking any action. No, it's, um, it's blue and they're behind me. And there's another one right there, watch. I didn't see shit. Hi, we're good. What's going on here? on the police and they made some pretty, uh, I guess you could say large accusations. So are you guys fine or anything like that? Yeah. Hi guys. Yeah, we're like, what the hell's going on? What are all these cars everywhere? This oh, is yeah. insane. Oh, wow. We're two ladies. We're just saying this. Okay. I'm again up, guys. Wow. You guys uh, against marching with the city? No, uh-uh. Not at all. Not at all? No arguments? Can do you mind oh, giving me on. your name and batch number or She's serial number? Sir? Devlin, one, two, three, four, ten, nineteen. It's one of those numbers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you, sir? It's so confusing. You have badge numbers sir? and serial numbers. Your name and batch number or serial number? I'm sorry, what was it? I didn't hear you. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're no, good. No, no, we're just a cult, and we're just. You guys look like you're all new on the force. No, all right. All right. No. I just want to make sure you guys are okay. Have, we're uh, fine. We're I, I would just really like to know what the accusations were, because that's kind of concerning. Uh, they were. I guess some people were confusing the tripods as guns or something like that. Really? So you had guns. Yeah. So, oh dang! Oh. Not guns. This what? calm and thoughtful approach made a huge difference. Instead of escalating the situation, they kept things peaceful. I saw one of your police cars just going around and around. I thought they were just being friendly. Who knew? Welcome back. You said, I'm sorry, what did you want me to call you again? Well, it's Pinche. Pinche, that, you want me to call you that? Yeah, go ahead. Pinche Becky. Uh, Every, that's uh, my name. Pinche Becky. All right, I'm not going to. No, that. you can call me Becky, boss. Becky? Becky. Okay, Becky. Uh, I'm Ortiz. Like I was saying, my badge was 135. My co-worker over there, he's Lee, bad number 1011. This would be the incident number, 24-36762. Because okay. um, that's what your co-worker over there wanted, okay. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Call number. Yeah, call incident IR, call. I would love is. one yeah, for me. All synonymous. Okay, okay, so one for her, one for me? Uh, yeah. Pinche Becky and Sassafras were relieved and happy that the officers didn't rush in with guns drawn. This calm and measured response made a huge difference. There was an incident in this Scientology building in 2019. A man has been shot and killed at a Scientology church in California during an incident that left two police officers injured. Police responded to a report that a suspicious suspect armed with a sword had entered the Church of Scientology in Inglewood on Wednesday afternoon, the Inglewood Police Department said in a news release. Two responding officers made contact with the sword-wielding man, leading to gunfire. The suspect was shot. It's actually good that these officers observed the situation in a very level-headed and calm manner and assessed it correctly. Is this a crime what they just did, calling on us, saying that we had guns? Well, it's hard to determine if it is a crime because the thing that we have to think about is that if they're calling in, if they legitimately believe and they mm -hmm. legitimately have a good faith belief, right, that Quote, you guys unquote, yeah. were in possession of guns, right then we can't fault them right because yeah. people can no, think I agree. people can think like they see a butcher walking down the street covered in like you know blood right as an example mm -hmm. um holding like a butcher knife 
and that's his job. He's a butcher, right? But then people could see, like, oh my gosh, you got like a serial killer over oh, here, right? So, right. Keep up uh, the good work. Stay safe, and I know thank it's gonna you. be a hot one, so. It will. We're, uh, we're gonna go out and eat. Thank, thank you. you so much. Have a blessed day. That was. On the same day, but much later, things took an even more intense turn in Los Angeles. When Solomon was detained on the subway and Danny was arrested, someone had called the police and claimed he had a gun. It was a tense and emotional moment for everyone involved. It's late in the evening, after 10 p.m., and Solomon, a teenager, is waiting for his train at a subway station in Los Angeles. The station is quiet, and Solomon is just minding his own business. Suddenly, he saw the LAPD has arrived, and they're approaching him with their guns drawn. The officers are shouting orders, their guns are pointed at him, but he can't understand what they are shouting at him. He feels completely overwhelmed by the situation. It is a dangerous and frightening moment for him. News of Solomon's arrest quickly spreads among the protesters. Danny and Chris, both fellow protesters, rush to the scene to support their friend. They arrive at the subway station. And Danny and Chris try to talk to the police, asking why Solomon is being arrested. Yeah, it's okay. Three zero two eleven. Go back there. Well, I'm gonna arrest you for interfering. He's not even interfering. I'm not even saying anything. Walk back. Walk back. What? Is that your buddy or what? I know. I was just going in with him, man. Yeah. Go, 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 Bro, I need to show this. I don't want him to get. I, I don't want to record this, but I feel like I have to. I'll just be fucking have it on my face, but. Not Solomon, man. You guys could do this to me, man. But don't fucking do this to Solomon. Bro. Thanks for going, Metro. Report any issues by calling Metro's law enforcement in the security hotline at 888 If you see something, say something. You guys gotta stop filming. No, what? Alright, you hear me too? Yeah. This is not a media camera though. This is just a phone. Everything's clear, they're all good, they know they What are you guys even doing, man? You guys know he's... He doesn't have a gun. It's just... It's got... What can we do? Uh, can, can you give us distance while while we conduct our record share? Have I asked your for your serial number? I'll with you later, but listen up. We're gonna do a record check. Once that that's all clear, he's free to go. Thank you. Danny, in particular, is very vocal and passionate, which unfortunately pisses off one of the officers. The officer, feeling challenged, decides to arrest Danny for interfering with a police investigation. It's a chaotic and stressful scene, with emotions running high on all sides. Turn off airs. The one right there. I know, I'm gonna love making a report on him. What can we put you into, sir? No, come where? You are interfering, sir? I am not. You're being detained, sir. It's okay, you're being recorded. We're really leaving, bro. What in the world? 
is going on? Yeah, shut the fuck up. We heard you already. Fucking this right now. Danny's in Please do me a favor and like the video. Your like is my applause, and if you want more people to know about the protests against Scientology, it helps if you like the video. Thank you very much. They're arresting Danny too? No, this is not the time. This is not the time. They're arresting Danny. Is that, uh, yeah. We know that they're, listen guys, listen, we already know, we know there is no yellow tape, we know that. I like, I like. We, we know LAPD is fucking corrupt, we know this. Damn, I, see, it's, it's LA. We know this, this is LA corruption, stop telling us all, da, 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 da. we know this. This is but LA. We, even though we have to, we have to abide, abide. we have to. We have to abide by their corruption. Listen, we know this. We know the law more than the officers do. We know this. Unfortunately, Aja is absolutely right. We know that the LAPD does what they want, and that's why Danny is now under arrest. Despite the injustice, it is necessary to obey the officer's orders. Solomon is banned. Solomon needs to be home by 10 p.m. too. He's banned from yeah, I, I'm not gonna chat. Associate with chat if if y'all ever PDC. see Solomon after 9:30, 9:30 is the time y'all start. I don't want to see nothing in his chat, but go home. This right here, he looks bad, but this right here could be a blessing for Solomon to fucking get it and through his head. This right here could be a blessing in disguise. So let's just go with that, okay? This right here, maybe is what Solomon needs. Just not right now, not right now. Not right now. This, this is exactly, right here could be a just blessing. Not right now, just, he, just let saying, it be. I'm just saying, just stop. Something. I'm surprised I didn't get arrested for just being there. Solomon was eventually released, and it took long enough because the officers knew after a few minutes that he didn't have a weapon on him. It's gonna take you home. Can you please just I go think... home? I think. I gotta go check up on Tori. Can you please just go home right now? Yeah? Let them, let them, let them process. Or so I want to see if this fits in my car. What's going on? What happened? What did he do? That well, we received a 911 call of a man with a gun on a train, and uh, he matched the description. That was the exact description that was given to a 911 dispatch. And he's detained. The name of the shirt and everything. Yes. He's detained. Yeah. Uh, you're not yeah. Solalom was finally brought home safely by Chris. Just one day earlier in Buffalo, New York, another protester named Henry faced a similar situation. Henry was outside the Scientology building, holding a placard and broadcasting live. Suddenly, Police arrived, responding to a false report that someone matching Henry's description was shooting. Thankfully, the officers were calm and level-headed, just like in Inglewood. They quickly realized there was no threat. No shots were fired, and Henry was cleared. It's a reminder of how crucial it is for police to assess situations carefully. Uh, hold on, we got action. We got some code threes. Utilization of an X. Hello. Suspect? Put your hands up, put your hands up. Sure. We're not black pants, but definitely sleeveless shoot. Do you have any weapons on you? No, sir, I do not. None on me whatsoever. Uh, that I can promise you. White male, shirt, Oh, that's all right. Just trying to make sure. You sure. Know that's a battery pack. Okay. Another one is a phone. I got two you phones on me. Else? No, sir, is this me? Yeah, Were you inside at all? No, I've been outside. Actually, I've been live streaming the entire time. Okay. Yeah. 
You don't got to cover it. You ain't got nothing. Don't no, cover. I've got keys. My car keys. Okay. My vehicle's you to the right of me. You no one else? No, sir. You're all all right. alone the whole time? Yes, sir. I've been live streaming. In fact, if you want to pull out any of your phones, you can see me on YouTube right now. Okay. Yeah. Moments later. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not here to be an asshole to you guys. No, no, like no, I said, I understand this is not my first time dealing with yeah. this scanning calls. So I guarantee it's not going to be the last, but if you have your cards on you, I'd love to get your information and if I can see the call log, that would be great. They actually show the information provided by the caller. That never happens usually. You want to see the call? See the oh, yeah, I would love to see it. Yeah, please. That's whenever you got it pulled up, let me know. Yeah, I just want everybody else to see it. Shooting, one person shot on the ground. Upper neck here, shooters a white male, sleeveless shirt, black pants, which is you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there we go. <laughs> and you guys don't know what's up, so you're just responding to a call that you otherwise, this is what your dispatch told you. The, I understand very well. They, had, they saw it on footage or something, so somebody's probably streaming or watching your yes, stream. Yes, 100%. To yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. Like I said, appreciate you keeping your cordial and professional. No, so no uh, it's a lot more than the folks over on the West Coast are doing. So you guys are at least doing a big step in that regard. Appreciate it. Take care. Now let's talk about Scotty, who had not one, but two intense encounters with the LAPD in a single day. It all started while Scotty was driving in his RV in Los Angeles. He was relaxing and minding his own business when, out of nowhere, police officers surrounded his vehicle. The LAPD believed Scotty had a gun. With weapons drawn, they aggressively approached his RV and demanded he come out. Scotty was shocked and scared as he followed their orders. The officers took him into custody, but after looking in the RV, they realized there was no weapon. It was a false alarm. As always, a fake call. The gun's down. My head. Turn off the. Let me just get out, man. Put the gun down. Stop pointing the gun at me, man. I gotta unlock it. I, I gotta unlock it. Why's this guy got his gun on me, dude? Streets arrived just in time to film the incident. Williams' video showed the world what had happened, capturing the intense and unnecessary arrest. I heard you guys on a thing said the car's been cleared. If the car's been cleared of a gun, there's no gun, get him the fuck out of handcuffs. You fucking kidding me? We're not going to keep him in handcuffs for an extended period of time. Get him the fuck out of handcuffs, as is the LAPD policy, Sergeant. Get him the fuck out of handcuffs. Hey, why is he in handcuffs? He's in handcuffs because, so let me finish. You asked me a question. All right, go. The answer. He's in handcuffs because somebody called the police and said that they keep pointing their gun at them. Right. Inside the RV. So, you cleared on. the RV. Hang on. Our RV's been cleared. Get him out of handcuffs. I didn't say they cleared the RV. Oh, I heard him clear it. His live stream is going. Don't tell me that shit. I heard it. Don't tell me that. He said it to her, whoever the female was. He said it's clear there's no gun. Get him out of handcuffs. Oh, yeah. I don't care. I'm not. There's nothing to talk about. Get him the fuck out of handcuffs. Get him out of handcuffs. There's nothing to even talk about. Hey, William. There's nothing to talk about. No, there is. I'm going to tell you what's okay. going on. You want an update? There you go. Give All right. So this is what's going on. Right now, the unit that called the police, they went to go look for the victim. All right. They can't find him. They're doing a further, which is a callback to see if the victim will meet. If the victim doesn't meet, then we're going to release it. The call was a man with a gun. There's no gun in the RV. 
We still got to do our due diligence. Oh, give me a fucking break. Shut up. I'm so tired of you guys. All right. There's no gun in the RV. Get him the fuck out of handcuffs. Take the cuff off, pig. You need all these cops. Fucking dirty fucking pigs. Oh, shit. Oh. I tried to leave with him on tight as shit. Look how tight those oh. Look how tight that shit. Later. Later that same day, Scotty faced another accusation of having a gun. This time, he was at a gas station pumping gas into his car. Once again, the police received a false report and arrived at the scene. However, this time, the officers were much calmer. They approached Scotty without drawing their weapons and asked him some questions. After a brief conversation and a quick check, they realized there was no threat and released him almost immediately.